Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about papillary carcinoma of the thyroid gland. Now papillary carcinoma, when we talk about all the malignancies in the thyroid gland, okay, you have various malignancies, you have follicular carcinoma, medullary carcinoma. So this is the most common form of the thyroid cancer, the papillary carcinoma. It accounts for around 85% of all the primary thyroid malignancies. Now one, uh, there are two, three things which are very important for your papillary carcinoma. First is the nuclear features. Okay, when we will discuss the morphology, the microscopy, you will understand that the main diagnosis of the papillary carcinoma is always made on the nuclear features only. Second is its predisposition uh, to have papillary carcinoma in the persons who are exposed to the ionizing radiation okay uh, uh, for the instance the Chernobyl incident okay so uh, here they were more exposed to the ionizing radiation before the age of 20 and therefore their increased risk to develop papillary carcinoma and third important thing is that its prognosis is very excellent okay so uh, unlike any malignancy its prognosis is very excellent now going to firstly how the patient presents then we'll go to the morphology and how the diagnosis is made so the clinical presentation is the patient can present with painless thyroid nodule okay there can be a thyroid nodule painless present or the patient can also present with a journalized uh, thyroid enlargement a mass in the neck or a increased lymph node size okay so there can be a single lymph node the cervical lymph node now cervical lymph node because papillary carcinoma it metastasizes through the lymphatics okay through the lymphatics it goes to the pep, uh, cervical lymph node so if you see a cervical lymph node which is enlarged especially in a female okay so all the diseases of the thyroid if you see they are more in females so if you see there are female presents with the increased size of the cervical lymph node that is cervical lymphadenopathy so chances can be that it can be papillary carcinoma so one more thing important is you do the radionuclide iodine scan so the neoplasms they are particularly cold on the nucleate scan so same as the papillary carcinoma is also cold on the scan now going to how the gross morphology looks like of the uh, papillary carcinoma so papillary carcinoma if this is your thyroid gland okay this is the thyroid gland so how it can present it can present as a solitary uh, tumor okay or it can present as your multifocal tumor okay so it can also be very well circumscribed or it can be having infiltrative margins also so it depends upon the uh, case to case so it can be solitary or multifocal it can be well circumscribed encapsulated also or it can also have your infiltrative margins then tumor can also have some areas of fibrosis calcification can be cystic also okay so uh, how the cut surface of the papillary carcinoma thyroid looks like so this is your cut surface okay we have opened the thyroid gland so you can see over here the surface is not regular okay the surface has something known as papillary excrescences okay so these are papillary projections which you are seeing the surface is not regular it is uneven and if you look closely there are some papillary projections which are present now going to the microscopy now in microscopy we will go to various points okay the first point is your papillae okay but one thing you should remember is that uh, the nuclear features which we will discuss they are the diagnostic of the papillary carcinoma so firstly the papillae so papillae how should it be it should be branching okay and secondly they should have a very good fibrovascular core present okay the simple uh, there are many in thyroid gland okay so if you see graves disease the multinodular goiter they also show papillae but how they were different because these papillae of the papillary carcinoma are more complex they have good fibrovascular core present inside so here you can see these are the papillae present okay so papillary projections like this they are papillae present and inside they have a vascular core present 
okay so these are the various you can see the papillae okay so then second feature uh, which is the nuclear features now we're going to nuclear feature there are three four nuclear features out of first is the the nuclei which is optically clear or which is known as ground glass nuclei or orphan any eye nuclei so here you can see so the nuclei if you see these are the nuclei so nuclei you can see they are just clear okay they are optically clear there the chromatin is uh, dispersed to the periphery and the uh, nucleus itself is white okay you can see it's white it is optically clear so white is no, uh, firstly the optically clear okay then ground glass like nuclei then third term which is used is orphan any nuclei so there was a cartoon okay in that cartoon the representation of the eyes that resemble the nuclei of the papillary carcinoma therefore the name was given orphan any eye nuclei the uh, now the second nuclear feature is the presence of nuclear inclusions so if you see over here in this uh, 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 nuclei in this nuclei you can see there are some cytoplasmic projections which are going inside the nucleus okay so uh, these are known as pseudo uh, inclusions so there are invaginations of the cytoplasm inside the nucleus okay the cytoplasm it protrudes inside the nucleus and it gives you appearance of a inclusion okay so this is the second feature third feature is the presence of nuclear grooves okay if you see the nucleus sometimes it shows a longitudinal line going through it okay this is known as grooves so this is again feature of your papillary carcinoma so even if you don't have papillae present okay no papillae are seen and nuclear features are present then also the diagnosis of your papillary carcinoma can be made so here another feature a very good feature of papillary carcinoma is the presence of samoma bodies so samoma bodies are just lamellated calcifications which you see in the papillary carcinoma these are example of your dystrophic calcification okay uh, now samoma bodies can also be seen in other tumors but they are also seen in papillary carcinoma so they are not very specific for it okay so samoma bodies one thing more important about samoma bodies is if you in the thyroid gland if you see samoma bodies so in the thyroid gland it is only seen in papillary carcinoma not other tumors then lastly lymphatic involvement can also be seen in your papillary carcinoma thyroid so uh, lymphatic involvement can go to cervical lymph node and lead to cervical lymphadenopathy now going to the variants we will not discuss the variants in detail but we will just go through it first is the follicular variant here as the name suggests there are follicles present there are no papillae present okay there are no papillae present but there are follicles present and the nuclear features nuclear features will always be present okay especially in like your tall cell variant here the cells the size will be uh, slightly taller then diffuse sclerosing variant is there then you have papillary microcarcinoma as the name suggests the size of the focus of the tumor is very small okay so there are around 13 variants of your papillary carcinoma we are just uh, uh, going uh, through few of them only now going to the pathogenesis now how does in papillary carcinoma occur so there is something known as map kinase pathway okay so in map kinase pathway you have your uh, ret gene okay so in this uh, firstly in this what will happen is there will be chromosomal abnormalities okay they are not point mutations which are taking place chromosomal abnormalities are there that is you have your translocation inversion going on so ret if there is a point mutation it goes towards the your medullary carcinoma however if you have translocation inversion of the uh, chromosomes it goes towards the papillary carcinoma and second gene which is mutated very frequently in your papillary carcinoma is very characteristic is your braf gene okay braf gene is also mutated in the papillary carcinoma so uh, first is your ret gene now ret gene occurs uh, is located on the chromosome 10 there is inversion on translocation this will lead to what there was this will lead to this rearrangement will lead to a uh, production of a gene which will lead to increased tyrosine kinase activity okay 
सो टायरोसिन काइनेज एक्टिविटी विल इंक्रीज ओके सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट जीन म्यूटेशन न सेकेंड जीन म्यूटेशन विच इज़ वेरी करेक्टरिस्टिक of is the gain in the function of mutation BRAF gene. Now here you have to remember the codon which is changed. It is BRAF. It is BRAF V six hundred E. Okay, so this gene, uh, this uh, trans uh, gene mutation is very specific for your papillary carcinoma. So uh, going to the prognosis. Now the treatment which is done in the case of papillary carcinoma of the thyroid is your thyroidectomy. The total thyroidectomy is done. because uh, the tumor can also be multifocal so total thyroidectomy is done the prognosis as we already told you that it is very excellent the patient survives mostly in the 95% of the cases the prognosis here is very good so this was all about the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid we'll discuss the other tumors in the next video do like share and subscribe to this channel if you like these videos also ask your query in the comment box thanks for watching this video